All right, welcome everyone to our very first uh, design and repair video. I promised that we would have a design and repair for a failed kiln exhaust. This is it. Um, this warning will apply to all of our uh, self-help videos, I guess. Actually, the videos are for informational purposes only and are designed to show you all the thought that goes in and some of the work. Um, for your repairs, always, always, always get your own qualified professionals uh, and make sure the repairs are done to local standards, practices, codes, etc. by uh, skilled trade people certified to do such. Having said all that, sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy the video. It's about 10 minutes long, I think. All right, treat today is to do the kiln exhaust design as promised. And so let's take a real quick look at what this one of these looks like. And it's kind of tucked behind the kiln, so it's hard to see. Um, but here you go. So it just has two pickups, runs to one blower. And let's take a closer look at some of this stuff. So. If I look really closely here, I have a pickup, uh, and if I look even closer, that pickup brings in room air. Whoops, let's go there. And it mixes the room air in this mixing manifold, so it keeps the air well below 140 degrees. Um, it has a, yeah, let me pick a different color here. It has a single exhaust blower here, a uh, pretty nice blower, but all these things are rated uh, for, say, less than 140, 150 degrees unless you buy something real specialized. Um, so as you can tell, if you look down here, you'll see they have, you know, some type of, whoops, plastic tubing. Let's go down here. And of course, the uh, plastic tubing is probably not going to survive real, real high temperature situations. And if we scoot along here a little further, uh, let's see if we get closer to this. Here's, here's our uh, second pickup on our second kiln. And just so you know, it is, let's go back to our old colors, nothing like yellow. It is here. And again, important part is uh, they bring in enough room air in this manifold to uh, make sure, pick another color, uh, make sure that this plastic hose won't melt and they won't burn out their uh, exhaust blower. So knowing all that, it's time to do what we do best and take a look at what they're doing and measure it. <laughs> so now we know how they do what they do. So here's their drawing and the measured stuff. Here's their exhaust fan. Here's their discharge air to the out door air. Uh, here's their entering air and entering t air temperature is well below 140 actually it's less than 100. Um, and so what do we want to measure? Well a couple things we want to measure is how much uh, how much air do we get from both kilns or each kiln or one blower which would be both kilns. And so we break out our hot wire and do a traverse of this 4 inch duct work and we get 14 CFM. So now we know how the how much part. And the next thing we need to know is, you know, how much negative pressure is at P1 and point P2. Um, and we break out our manometer and we measure about a tenth of an inch water column. Uh, we do measure the entering air tap, which in this case is less than 100. And we also measure one other thing called total dynamic head, which is the pressure across this blower because it has to do some work to suck the stuff up 
and it has to do some work to push it out the building. So work plus work, and that's way less than one inch uh, of water column. So the only other thing we have to do before we design a new one is say, well, we could match all these numbers. Is there anything else that we're not happy with? And the answer is yes. Um, these are counterflow systems, so air comes in the top of the kiln and goes out the bottom. And that's why you see these pictures where these pickups are very low. They are on the bottom of the kiln, so they draw air uh, from top in theory, or they're supposed to. They're supposed to draw air from the top up here through the bottom or down through the kiln and then through this cup and then through this hose and out to their exhaust blower. So you get the idea. They're called counterflow um, and that's how they're supposed to work. So they do that pretty effectively and they pull out all the hydrocarbons especially in the bisque runs and that's kinda the primary purpose for them although when you're when you have glazes and other things it's a problem as well. Uh, one of the problems that we notice is they're not strong enough to remove the smell generated when the kiln is burning wax off. People put wax on their wares so they don't glaze over parts they don't want to and the wax melts somewhere around four to 800 degrees and right in that temperature range uh, the wax smell is very apparent so our assumption is the hydrocarbons are really tiny and you know leaking out of the kiln and we all smell them so it's probably not healthy so in our new design let's see if we could account for that so I'm gonna pop this up real quick and I say oh this is our new design so I would like an exhaust air grill above both kilns and I'm gonna take a guess it's gonna be 65 to 80 CFM I would like the counterflow exhaust to exceed what theirs is a little bit, so 15 to 18 CFM. And I'd like my pressure, negative pressure here, to be below theirs, uh, or a greater negative uh, pressure. So I'm calling out greater than a tenth, which was approximately where they were at. I'm going to say closer to 0.15 inches to start. Um, and this is the design. So now let's build it. So we build it. It's super economical four inch dryer duct stuff. It's super economical, super reliable uh, axial uh, fan stuff. Um, because we've added this uh, return air grill, now we have way more room air so we have absolutely no worry about overheating our blower um, and we end up with a pretty neat piece so we'll just take you through this real quick so pretty simple to build just you know chuck it all together and uh, you know it ends up to be a pretty neat job um, this is interesting in that it was creative and economical this return air grill is really a soffit vent for about two bucks and it was simple to slice this pipe as big as the vent then screw the vent down it's a um, very flexible vent and it's got a uh, insect screen behind it so when you screw it on and cock in position if you do a nice neat job then every so often somebody gets to come and uh, brush it clean as the screen gets a little bit dirty uh, from dust and whatnot, so it's kind of a cool, economical, easy way to create a round grill, and I think that was two or three dollars at best. So let's just look at the rest of this. So fairly neat work. Uh, Use some old parts, uh, standoff, vibration mounting. Um, you know, everything metal, everything conventional, and a couple things to note. A volume damper here and a volume damper here. Uh, those are a couple bucks a piece as well. 
And let's see, before I get too far out, a nice electronic timer where they can pick, and generally they pick 12 hours. That's more than enough for a bisque run or a glaze run. And, um, you know, if we want to automate that some more, we could integrate it with the, uh, the existing uh, V6CF kiln controls, which have a fan output. Uh, but for now, when you start a kiln, you hit the 12-hour button, and that's why there's the big sign there and you're good to go. So I used to have a spring wound up timer that was uh, broken so they just turn it on and turn it off in the morning. So that's it and I can say now that we've operated for several months uh, pretty successful seems to pick up all the wax smell from these two kilns. You know if we wanted to put uh, hoods above these kilns and pipe it into this we could have uh, with some flex and counterweight so when you open the, the lid you know the hood goes up uh, for now it's just a replacement of the existing and hopefully we're thinking of superior replacement and then any tricks that we used let's see um, key for us was to get 17 CFM so we just dropped this volume damper until we got P1 and P2 where we want it, which was about 0.15 inches negative, uh, which resulted in um, about 0.195 inches at this point. So I gave him a test port and, uh, you know, marked it. Then this volume damper is completely open. This volume damper is ever so slightly closed to get our required pressures. Um, and then both of them are screwed down and then taped over. So there's very little that could go wrong with this, and we would expect this um, fan to last them on the order of five to ten years. So, you know, maybe longer. But it's super quiet, super efficient. And then I think we even had enough money, uh, yeah, we did, to install, I'm getting there. Oop, that would have been great right there to install um, this manometer. It's a YouTube manometer. Uh, this fan is rated at 1.1 inches, I believe. And this manometer, when the fan is running, shows a half inch, which means it's a half inch down, and it's a half inch up. So, half inch down plus a half inch up equals one inch. So whenever this is operating, as long as it's not obstructed on the outside, a bird's nest or uh, something else in here is not extremely obstructed, they'll see this mark at about half an inch. And so it's uh, for a couple dollars. I couldn't resist. So the whole system, uh, I want to say, is eh, 250 bucks. Um, so it was very convenient, very economical, and we think superior to what they had. Uh, and then I'm going to add a bunch of disclaimers to this. Well, we're back. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see that some real thought went into it. And uh, I think this was economical solution and an improvement over the existing system. Um, Hopefully you'll tune back in. We've got a number of more videos to uh, create and some nice tips. You know, we virtually know uh, well before a thermal couple goes bad when it's going to. Uh, we're currently doing thermal scans on some of the power and finding some interesting things there. So we'll show you that as well. If you have any comments or questions, uh, try to put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. Uh, other than that, we'll see you in the next video.